one of your librarians at the Cape May County Library, and I'm going to tell you all about the library today. So first, show of hands, who has ever been to a library of any kind before? Very nice. And who has ever been to one of the Cape May County Libraries before? Raise your hand. All right, great. We have eight library branches, plus a mystery branch that I'll tell you about. And you can use your library card at any of those libraries. And you can pick stuff up from one library and drop them off at another library. You can use the libraries interchangeably, so you can go to whichever one you want. Now we're going to introduce you to some of the people that you might see when you come to the library. And we're going to let you see what some of the library branches look like. Hello, my name is Miss Kristen, and I am one of your Cape May County Library Children's Librarians. Three things to know about me. I love Dogman, Legos, and reading. I also order the nonfiction children's books for the Cape May County Library. Nonfiction is all about being curious. If there is something you are curious about, say Slime or Alexander Hamilton, then you should check out the nonfiction section at your local library branch. If you can't find the book you're looking for, there's a chance I can order it, so please ask. I'm here at the Sea Isle City Library branch, and this is the children's section of the library. The children's section has everything from graphic novels to drawing books to the newest DVDs. If you get the chance to visit the Sea Isle Library, please make sure to say hello. I'm always happy to help someone find their next favorite book. We hope to see you soon. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia and I am one of your children's librarians from the Cape May County Library. I love Star Wars, Marvel, and DC. My favorite superheroes are Captain America and Wonder Woman. Both are pretty awesome. I order the picture books, early readers, and holiday books here in the Cape May County Library. If there's ever something that you are looking for and can't find, please let me know and I will happily try and purchase it for you so that we can have it in the library. I am currently working at the Wildwood Crest Library, so if you want to hang on, we will take a quick spin around the room so you can see all of the awesome and fun things that we have here. The Wildwood Crest Library is located on Atlantic Avenue across from the tennis courts and is two blocks from the ocean. Hello, my name is Susan. I'm the Children's Department Associate at the Cape May County Library. My favorite authors are Mo Willems, uh, Audrey Wood, Ezra Jack Keats, and Dan Gutman. My favorite series would be the, um, the Cowgirl Kate series in the early readers, the Puppy Place series, Magic Treehouse, and the I Survive series. Um, I love to learn, so I read a lot of nonfiction informational books and biographies. Um, I'm here at the Lower Cape Library. Did you know that the Lower Cape Library has the second largest um, children's book collection in the county. Yep, we have lots of books here for children and um, middle school uh, kids and teens. Uh, the books range from board books to um, early readers, graphic novels, picture books, um, nonfiction books, and even audiobooks. The next time you visit the Lower Cape Library, I hope that you'll stop by and say hello. I would love to meet you and help you uh, find the right book. See you soon. The Lower Cape Library, also called the Lower Township Library, is on Bayshore Road in the Villas by Memorial School and the Senior Center. The Cape May City Library is located on Ocean Street between the beach and the Washington Square Mall. The Stone Harbor Library is on the corner of 96th Street and 2nd Ave. You can see it up ahead as you drive onto the island. The Woodbine Library is located on Monroe Avenue and is attached to the Woodbine School. The library is open even when the school is closed, so check our website or call for hours. The Upper Cape Library is located on Tuckahoe Road between the Rescue Squad and the Municipal Court and around the corner from the middle school. Hi, I'm Vicki. I'm a children's librarian at the Cape May Courthouse Branch. Hi, my name is Lisa. I work at the Cape May County Library and Courthouse. My job is to straighten the children's room up and put books away and make it all nice and clean and for you to come and visit us. So I hope you'll come and see us. 
And I'm Mary. I work at the Cape May Courthouse Library. I love cats. They are so friendly and fuzzy and cuddly. And I also love quokkas, which are like kangaroos and mice mixed together. And they're about the size of a cat. And I also love listening to audiobooks. That's one of the reasons I love the Libby app so much, because I can just put them on my phone and then listen to them while I'm doing other stuff. They are so fun. And I get to do outreach with you guys. I get to make videos like this for you. I get to come visit you at your schools. Hopefully I've seen you at your school before. I get to do the best job by far. Our Cape May Courthouse Library is located on Mechanic Street across from the police station. Our children's room is on the ground floor. We rearranged the room a bit so let us know if you need any help finding anything. Our teen space is on the second floor. Every branch has a teen space, but this one is by far the largest. Outside of the courthouse library, we have our story walk. You can walk along the fence and enjoy an excellent picture book. We're hoping to put up more story walks throughout the county. After enjoying the story walk, you can visit our lovely pocket park. We also have a mystery library that has no location. Can you guess what it is? It's our bookmobile! The bookmobile drives around the county and parks in certain places. You may also see the bookmobile in parades and at events. If you see the bookmobile parked, hop right on and check out a book. You can call or visit our website for the bookmobile's schedule of stops. We would love for you to get a library card. All you have to do is come into one of our libraries with your adult and have them bring their driver's license or state ID or a bill um, that's been sent to them at home. And also we have something wonderful going on. We have library card drives going on through the schools. So you'll be able to fill out a form and then we'll bring the card to you at school and your teacher can give it to you. Dramatic reading time. This book is called Creepy Carrots. Written by Aaron Reynolds and illustrated by Peter Brown. And thank you very much to Simon & Schuster for allowing us to read this book and share it with you all. Creepy Carrots. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots. And the carrots that grew in Crack and Hopper Field were the best! Fat, crisp, and free for the taking. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. He yanked out a few on his way to Little League practice. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots until they started following him. He first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares. Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack when he heard it, that soft, sinister, of carrots creeping. He turned, but there was nothing there. Just my imagination, he thought, but he hopped a little faster. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were! Jasper whipped around, but nothing. He laughed at himself, picked his toothbrush off, off the floor, and went to bed, quickly. The next morning, he approached Krakenhopper Crack Field slowly. He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Nothing happened. Woo! Creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. But when he arrived home that evening, Mom! Mom! James Jasper screamed, Creepy carrots in the shed! His mom opened the door slowly. There weren't any carrots. Not even a regular kind. There are no such things as creepy carrots, Mom said, shaking her head. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it. Breathing. Terrible. Carroty. Breathing. And there on his wall, <gasps> creepy carrots, he shouted. Dad, dad. His dad thumped into his room and threw on the lights. They searched under the bed. No creepy carrots. They looked through the closet. No creepy carrots. They opened the dresser drawers. No creepy carrots. Just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head. Now go to sleep. That was, gonna, that was not going to happen. By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing creepy carrots creeping everywhere. Jasper knew his parents were wrong, creepy carrots were real, and they were coming for him. But they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. 
Jasper hatched a plan. First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Krakenhopper Field. <gasps> he's making lines, he's sawing wood, he's using a backhoe, he's filling things with water, he's hammering stuff up. As the sun finally set across Krakenhopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. On his way home, there was no donk, donk, donk. There were no carrot-shaped shadows. His plan had worked. No creepy carrots would ever get out of that carrot patch again. And as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenhopper Field cheered. Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever, ever again. The end. Excellent story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed dramatically reading it. The library, of course, has tons of books, but we also have a lot of other stuff. We have audiobooks, of course, books on CD, and books on Playaway. So it's an MP3 player that reads the book to you. All you have to do is plug in your headphones. They are wonderful. We also have Wonder Books. Wonder Books have this handy dandy audio player in the front right here, and it plays out the book for you and even tells you when to turn the page. They are glorious. And we have lots of movies and TV shows that you can borrow. We even have games you can borrow, including Switch games. And we have watch pads, which have games on them. And they're all educational games in case you need to make a good argument for them. And watch pads are super fun and they're educational. All right. And we, of course, also have our ebooks and e audiobooks that you can download for free using the Libby app. And we have a whole nother video all about the Libby app if you want to know more about that. And you're not limited to what is at the library that's closest to you. If you are down at the south end of the county and you want a book that's up at the north end of the county, just let us know. We have a guy named George who goes through all the libraries every single day, and he will bring the books to the closest library for you. Whichever one that you want, it is amazing. So you don't get to get books from just one building. You're really getting books from all eight buildings, plus the bookmobile. We have a few different ways that you can come and get stuff from us right now. You can ask us to pull stuff aside for you and then we'll set up an appointment for contactless curbside pickup, or you can come to the library during its open hours. Each branch has, branch has different open hours though, so make sure you double check when your library branch is open. And you can also always use the library online. Our databases are always available and you can always get your eBooks and e-audiobooks through the Libby app. You can always return your items by putting them into a drop box outside your local library. Drop boxes are open 24 seven. We love running events for you. Sadly, we can't be running any in-person events in the library through at least the end of the year, but we're doing tons of stuff online and you can find them through all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. There's tons of stuff on there. We're doing cooking videos. We're doing yoga. We're doing story time. We're doing book clubs. We're doing so much fun stuff. All right, so please check us out online and follow along. And there is so much stuff that we've been doing for the past like six months on there. So there's plenty to be doing there. The way things used to be, if you borrowed something from the library and then brought it back after the due date, you would have to pay something like 10 cents a day for every day it was late. We no longer have that for anything in the children's room or in the teen room. So there are no late fees for anything in the children's room or in the teen room. And we also have something called reading away your fines, which you can use, like say if you lost something you borrowed or it got damaged, just let us know. It's totally fine. And then you can come to the library and then you just tell us you want to read away your fines and you sit down and you read and it all goes away. Even if you have fines on your library account, you can still use all of our online resources. So you can check out books on the library's Libby app and you can use Hoopla, and you can use all of our online databases. Something important to remember is that the library never hates you. The library always wants you to keep coming back. So if something happens to something that you borrow, just talk to us about it and we can work it out. It is dramatic reading time. This book is called Creepy Pair of Underwear and it's written by Aaron Reynolds and illustrated by Peter Brown. And thank you very much to Simon & Schuster for allowing us to read this book and share it with you all. Creepy pair of underwear. 
Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. Creepy underwear! So creepy, so comfy. They were glorious. Mom, Mom, can we get these? Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore. I'm a big rabbit now. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on, asked Dad. Dad, I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. He sounds like a big rabbit, right? The way I'm doing his voice. His dad shut the door, and that's when Jasper noticed the underwear glowed. A ghoulish, greenish glow. He closed his eyes. He pulled up the covers. He buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his hamper. He finally fell asleep. But when he got up the next day, he was wearing the creepy underwear! Jasper threw them into the garbage can. He was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything. But he wasn't done with scary underwear. After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard it. A scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and they were back! staring at him with that ghoulish, greenish glow. He snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer. He grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. Bye-bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package into the mailbox. It says, to China. It's pretty far from here. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were! And were those chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China, and it had brought back souvenirs. Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them, but this, this was an underwear emergency. This time, the creepy underwear were gone for good! At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing. Just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshades. Whew. There was no sign of creepy underwear. He went into the bathroom to comb his ears. They were back! What's the matter with you? His mom asked. You're so jittery lately. Nothing, he yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. He seized the underwear, he snagged a shovel from the garage, and he rode. He didn't stop pedaling until he reached Creek Hanger Hill. Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom, that ghoulish greenish glow. When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. They couldn't be in there. There was no way, right? He reached for the handle. He peeked in, nothing, just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. Oof. There was just one problem. It was really dark in there, even for a big rabbit. Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white and he knew what he had to do. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they were sti but still filled the room with that gentle greenish glow. The next day, Jasper gathered all his allowance money and went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night, Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he lay down to sleep, he smiled. And so did his underwear, because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared of creepy underwear. The end.
I have never experienced underwear like that, but it's a pretty interesting story. And let's talk about how to be nice and take care of all types of library items, okay? So, do we want to step on it? No. Do we want to eat around it? No. This stuff could get in there. That's gross. Do we want to drink around it? No, because then it could fall on there, right? And then it would be all damaged, and then nobody else would be able to use that thing. Uh, do we want to let our dog eat it? <laughs> no. Which... You may think that's pretty silly, but we get a lot of books back that have been chewed by dogs. Uh, and, and, and maybe cats, and maybe bunnies, I don't know. It's been chewed. Uh, and do we want to eat it ourselves? No, right? And we don't want to let like a toddler in our house eat it or anything either. Uh, both for the toddler's sake and for the item's sake, the book's sake. Uh, do we want to throw it? No, because it's a thing that we want lots of people to be able to use, right? And throwing it will damage it. And do we want to have dirty hands when we're using it? Like we have jelly on our hands or mud on our hands or something? No. Right? We want to have nice clean hands when we use it. Do we want to leave it outside? No. Even if it's like on the porch, like under a roof, it can still get super weird and bugs can get into it, right? So don't leave it outside. You can take it outside, obviously, but just don't leave it outside. We want to be able to have you borrow some really nice, clean, good looking stuff. And the better everybody treats everything, the more stuff that we can lend out, okay? And the longer the stuff lasts. So like, if this book lasts 20 years, then I could get stuff throughout those 20 years, right? But if it's all messed up and broken and I have to keep replacing it, then I'm not going to be able to buy as much stuff. If I have to replace this five times in 20 years, then that's like four other things or five other things that I'm not going to be able to buy that are different, all right? So we want to give you lots of choices. And we also want you to be able to borrow stuff that looks real good. So that is why we have all of these things we want you to do. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. Do we want to put our stuff on a nice table? Yeah, right? The floor isn't a place for this stuff. The table is. Yeah. Or a shelf, you know. Uh, do we want to put it in our bag and keep it safe? Yeah, we totally do. But do we want to have a water bottle in that bag with our stuff? No, because the water bottle might leak and then the thing would be damaged and then we'd have to replace it and then that's less stuff we can get for, the, for you to use, all right? So, put it in the bag, but don't have a water bottle in the bag. And, oh, I said, do we want to put it on a shelf? Yeah, totally, right? And then if we put all our library items on a shelf or on a table or in one specific place, then we know where they all are when it's time to bring them back and we don't have to do a big search for them. And do we want to bring it back when we're done with it so other people can use it? Yeah, totally. And remember, I said there's no late fees, all right? You don't have to pay anything. The, it used to be like 10 cents a day for a book, all right? But you don't have to pay anything for late fees. Just bring it back as soon as you can so somebody else can use it. It's always sad when you come in to get something and it's not on the shelf, right? And we try to make it so that never happens. But people doing their part and bringing it back is the best way to make sure it doesn't happen. All right, and now this is more important than ever right now. You want to make sure you wash your hands before you touch library stuff and after you use library stuff or touch library stuff, okay? So wash your hands before and wash your hands after. We wanna make sure that you stay as safe as possible. And when we get books back from people, we do put them in quarantine for five days so that all the germs are dead before we put it back on the shelf, okay? But we wanna make sure that you're staying as safe as humanly possible. And we have lots of different rules for ourselves when we're touching your stuff. Like I'm touching this book right now with bare hands and I did just wash them, but I'm still gonna put it in quarantine after because I don't want anybody to get sick just in case, okay? So we're following a whole bunch of rules and we just want you to do your part at keeping you safe. Now the Technology Learning Center is going to tell you about all the stuff that they do. Here at the Technology Learning Center, we have a ton of items that patrons can come in and use to learn and create with. Our 3D printers can make a whole bunch of creative 3D models. Patrons can ask us to print 3D models found on websites like Thingiverse and come pick them up from the library. There are a ton of 3D models to pick and choose from, like our little huggable ghost here. With our virtual reality headset, you can dive into one of our many games and activities and be surrounded by whole new worlds. Slice up some fruit with Fruit Ninja or make some 3D works of art and tilt brush. Come learn with one of our many robots. Pilot our rolling Sphero, or meet our playful Dash. We have a bunch of robot friends to come and meet. We 
We also have many hands-on activities you can create and play with. We have all sorts of activities including dominoes, marbles, straw beads, keva planks, and many more. Our Cricut Cutter can make awesome cutouts used for anything you can think of. Make neat paper crafts like this spooky Halloween house. We can also help you create things by using one of our many tools, like our poster printer. If you have Minecraft at home, we also have a Minecraft server that you can join and play along with your friends in. We have activities every month that you can come and join. We also have our summer STEAM events and our yearly New Jersey Makers Day, which is filled with a whole bunch of fun activities from playing on some pumpkin drums to creating digital finger paint art. We have new things to experience each year. If you're looking for a craft to do at home with the family, we've been making videos on our Facebook for a whole bunch of things to create. While the Technology Learning Center is waiting for when everyone can be brought back safely, we hope to see you all again once the Cayman County Library can open back up to the public. Have a wonderful rest of the year from your friends at the Technology Learning Center. Now you know so much about the library. Please spread the word. Tell everybody you know all about us. I've really enjoyed getting to share everything with you today and I hope you have a glorious rest of the school year.